Hello everyone, uh, my name is Kieran, Parteus Astrology, and this week is a big one because we have the King of the Gods moving into the house of spirituality. Jupiter is moving into Pisces, yes, on uh, Friday morning, really late Thursday evening, actually. And there's plenty to talk about. My style, just for those who don't realize, you might get drawn in deep goes into the mythology, the symbolism, all the intuitive nuances. I bring in psychology, I bring in literature. So the range is quite broad, in fact, quite Jupiterian. So hopefully that uh, is interesting for you. So when I thought about this, it occurred to me that as a Sagittarian ruled by Jupiter, I hadn't really given enough time to make a full assessment of Jupiter and what it means in my life. Perhaps we need the benefits of hindsight to get a full picture uh, because when we're young everything is ahead of us, not um, uh, not much behind us. And I'd like to think of it as an inner Z spot somehow, Z referring to Zeus is who is Jupiter. And we may get a flavor of Jupiter when he shows up as a benevolent aunt or uncle who smiled upon you one day, gave you a gift, and it felt like being touched by a kind of grace. Jupiter is in the story of Father Christmas with all the good cheer, and also in the story of Cinderella, where the fairy godmother makes all the wishes come true. That's also a hint of what Jupiter is about. He comes as a lucky break or a sudden gain, a windfall, a bit of magic. Uh, but as all fairy tales warn us, it can get out of hand. Uh, and those with sun conjunct Jupiter will know things can magnify way out of proportion. So Jupiter can be a bit of a helium balloon floating off and getting out of control. This quote here is from a, a recent song I'll put the link below. It refers more to Neptune and um, the images from Cappadocia in Turkey. So the more I think about Jupiter, the more there is to say, which is very appropriate. Um, I'm calling him a wish fulfillment junkie. He holds on to hope for something better just around the corner. This may seem unrealistic and impractical, but it's a strategy that does not need any immediate results. This can be your Jupiterian superpower if you align with it well enough. It can cut through an enormous barrage of slings, arrows and setbacks. Obstacles are not a problem for Jupiter. He has the power to shapeshift, which is very handy for getting his way. And that meant that he could not be restrained, except by appeals to reason or a trade-off deal. So when I think about it, this magic ingredient of optimism uh, is uh, without a world without optimism is perversely made, not just dull, but also almost unbearable uh, and head banging in the mode of Saturn. So Jupiter is very different to Saturn. He has a list of attributes as long as the roll call of foreign dignitaries arriving at an embassy and delayed gratification is not one of them. So a variant of the word Jupiter is Jove. So when people said by Jove, they were swearing by Jupiter. And the interesting thing, uh, Jupiter is the Roman version of the Greek Zeus. In Rome, they hated the idea of kings. So they rebranded them as priests of Jupiter and called them Flam. So Jupiter is a kind of king, he's very kingly. Uh, but he behaves differently in different houses, so we'll come to that, how he behaves in Pisces. Um, uh, but remember that kings are not always welcome in every house. He can sometimes be seen with a thunderbolt, so he's linked to Thor in Norse mythology. But uh, what I'm going to mention now is that he was a great philanderer, whether you approve of that or not. Uh, he was... Um, he put it about a lot. I was about to say also that when he's portrayed, it's usually as a, a, a forceful male figure with a beard and 
with with wisdom as well so a little bit like the god of the old testament there's a huge story to that which uh, we won't go into or he has here a staff and um corinthian columns and uh, i think the laurel of the oak he's associated with the oak and the eagle so he has a lot of symbolism you see the, also the lightning flashes in the background there so while it may seem we're jumping around a bit one of the themes of jupiter is i think self-actualization and the great psychologist of self-actualization was abraham maslow but i think also his theory of the um, hierarchy of needs is very jupiterian in a way because it's about aspiration and, and achievement uh, jupiter is about hopes and dreams and um, these these dreams appear less enticing when the goals are actually reached because each level that you reach uh, you can lose the motivational energy to reach the next one so there's a paradox here isn't there so uh, abraham maslow who's, who's an aries born april 1st 1908 talked about this in his model where each level once each level is satisfied we aspire to the next one so it's the energy of desiring and aspiring that gives us the joy that we experience in life, not the attainment itself. Uh, so people confuse that. They think that everything is going to be fine when you get the goal. But I think this is what Jupiter teaches us. If, if hope is not worn down from repetition, understanding this old adage helps to access this Jupiterian insight that it's the journey that's the goal, not the destination. Uh, Maslow is interesting as well because he studied the phenomena of peak moments and epiphanies in psychologically healthy humans. Uh, these were sudden influxes of numinous experience giving you a bird's eye view that fully illumines the rest of your life. And that I think is very Jupiterian as well, uh, possibly also Neptunian. So Maslow's Jupiter was in Leo, which is a beautiful placement uh, for Jupiter as he matches the sun very well and uh, his role as a great benefactor is enhanced. So we have Jupiter, we have Zeus um, and Babylonian and Egyptian forms of this deity as well. So there is also Amun-Ra, the Egyptian, and Baal the Babylonian deity and one of the largest temples in fact the largest temple to Jupiter was at Heliopolis which is modern day Baalbek in Lebanon um, so there's a whole other story here and um, my preference is for the Greek version of Jupiter the, what I, but I would say that there is, is this shadow side. So if we go into Baal, there is a shadow side uh, where they perhaps demanded sacrifice. And the version that we see and that commonly is used in tropical astrology is that he's the lovable rascal um, with many, many flaws, but not, I mean, he's called a benefic. Uh, and, um, but the fact that he is colossal is, <laughs> what's important so this was the lot this is a picture of alexander at the temple of jupiter Amun, um, and the it refers to the great size and vastness of his stature as a deity so as we mentioned um he was uh, amorous and could you could say polyamorous and this is where all the juicy stories about jupiter or zeus um, occur I'll take you through a few of them here. This is Danae, uh, who apparently uh, was um, seduced by Zeus as in the form of a golden rain. And here we see uh, Zeus or Jupiter uh, in the form of an eagle seducing the, uh, it was said to be beautiful young boy, Ganymede. Uh, again, there's a whole other story here that um, is, is the, the gay side of uh, Jupiter, maybe a bisexual element, uh, uh, because Ganymede became famous as Jupiter's uh, cupbearer. 
So the stories get wackier. Uh, this is Io, and um, if he wasn't turning her into a cow to hide from Hera, uh, he turned himself into clouds to make love to her as a cloud. So I've seen online that people don't really understand this story very well. They can't quite get how a swan can be sexual, but I think this makes it very clear. So Leda uh, was seduced by Jupiter in the form of a swan. This story is also interesting uh, because Semele uh, insisted on seeing Jupiter in his radiant godhead, which would automatically stun her into blindness. And he warned her not to do so, but she insisted. Um, this image is by Gustave Moreau, and I think it uh, looks very much like the polymorphousness of the Hindu cosmogony. And um, definitely there's a kind of polymorphous element here. Here's the same image, but in close up. So as you can see, he was pretty busy. Uh, he also came to uh, Europa in the form of a bull. And here we have Thetis, um, and there's a huge story here, really. Uh, Jupiter uh, received a prophecy that uh, any progeny from Thetis would uh, overthrow him, so he arranged for her to marry Peleus. They had a wedding party, but someone forgot to invite Eris, <laughs> the goddess of discord, and that uh, tri triggered the Trojan War. She, she became the mother of Achilles, the hero, the great hero. So there's a lot more to Zeus than meets the eye. Uh, it's almost too much to take in. So all these juicy stories uh, reminds us that uh, his consort Hera or, or Juno uh, is often shown as being the jealous wife, but actually Hera was his sister. So that's worth thinking about. And the other thing to remember is that he's remarkably fertile for, for a male god. Uh, Pallas Athene sprung from his forehead and the god, the great god of the grape, Dionysius sprang from his thigh or was reborn in his thigh. Mm. So he's definitely larger than life. Um, in literature we get all kinds of characters who have Jupiterian traits from Rabelais' Pantagruel, the completely oversized and greedy uh, character. Falstaff also comes to mind as well in Shakespeare and, and in Verdi. Um, and Micawber in D Charles Dickens as well, has, um, he's an eternal optimist, so there's a flavour of Jupiter in, in him as well. The thing was that he was always jumbo sized, he had an enormous appetite for life and uh, enjoyed life. So as I said, Jupiter is moving into Pisces. And the reason for celebrating that is that Jupiter was the traditional landlord of um, the house of Pisces, if you like. The modern ruler is Neptune, but um, all, traditional astrologers always refer to Jupiter as the, the ruler of uh, Pisces. So this means that two rulers are going into each other's areas um, and the exuberance may be short-lived but it's a definitely a welcome change from Jupiter being in Aquarius where Saturn was placed so I think he was quite restricted there and we're getting a bit of tired of all, all those rules and regulations so the fact that he's coming into Pisces will give him a lot of breathing room there may be a lot of expansion there'll be a feeling of ease and I think it's a divine pairing. So here we can look at a few transits. You might consider when Jupiter was last in Pisces in 2010. For example, that was the first time I went to an ashram in India. But he's going into Pisces at the end of this week until June 28th. And just to be aware that the sun squares Jupiter on May 21st as well. 
Jupiter then re-enters Pisces in this, uh, on December 29th for a longer stay going to full 30 degrees until May the 10th, 2022. And then he retrogrades uh, back in again on October 28th to December 20th, 2022. The, the big thing that's coming, uh, apart from the fact that Jupiter will go into Pisces at all, is that Neptune is there. So Neptune is the god of the ocean. We'll talk a little bit more about Neptune. And they will uh, slowly, Jupiter will come to the same position, roughly around 23 to 24 degrees of Pisces uh, next April. So between April 9th and 15th next year, we're going to get this luminous, incredible conjunction of Jupiter with Neptune. And uh, that's what I'm looking forward to because I think I'm already feeling it and that's why I'm going into this now so that we can look ahead and um, we can think about this. Um, so there are so many things to, to mention. We uh, Just to take note of which house this would fall in for you so that you can make more sense of it. Um, but also that it could be some kind of quantum leap in your spiritual development or in your artistic or creative urges. There's a lot to look forward to, but there's a lot to be aware of as well. So who is Neptune and how is Neptune different to Jupiter? So as I said, Neptune is the modern, considered the modern ruler of Pisces. And this image by Walter Crane um, shows the kind of incipient formlessness of the waves in the sea. And there's Neptune in the background. Um, so net, for Neptune, there are no words. So this is the thing where there is a long list of uh, descriptors for Jupiter that seem to fit. As soon as you start to try to describe Neptune, those words just seem to fall to one side or become useless because words do not adequately describe Neptune. Um, so uh, I remember I referred to Father Ocean, the music by Ben Bomer, the monolink. Um, that gives a bit of an indication of the kind of surrender, feeling of surrender towards uh, Neptune. So Neptune is inchoate and linked to the Redeemer or Martyr Complex, according to Liz Green, and associated with the primeval water deities, Tiamat and Namu, and a self-generating Great Mother. So Neptune, or otherwise known as Poseidon in the Greek uh, mythology, is associated with riding the waves and uh, but this could drown people as much as he could um, help them. I think there's a part of the story of Ulysses where um, Poseidon is brought along to drown, either drown the sailors or to part the rocks to allow them to go through. So you get both sides of this monster of the deep. But also uh, Neptune and Pisces are associated with excess flooding or with gas explosions. Um, deceptions and so forth. Uh, so that's a literal possibility. Uh, water also refers to emotions, so we could be uh, getting a like, massive feeling of overwhelm as well. So if words don't work, what can we do? I think the approach to Neptune could be somewhat more non-linear um, in quantum leaps or come through dreams and intuitions, poetry, music, any kind of non-logical thinking. And yes, even spooky action at a distance, uh, well known in modern physics. I think the para in paranormal may also have become more normalized during this time, especially perhaps around the peak when uh, Jupiter conjuncts Neptune. But these are general Piscean themes as well. But Pisces comes as a projection of the saviour as well, so we have to be careful for, about delusions, deceits, uh, so uh, things can become like a car crash, or we become pathologically infantile, 
and I think we can see some of that is happening already. The labels, however, just roll off Neptune. And even when we say Neptune is spiritual, what does that mean? You know, it covers a multitude of sins. It could be about the disintegration of the self as much as the opposite, which is the drive to wholeness and recovery of the self. So with Neptune and Pisces, we get blurred boundaries and um, it's a bit of a gossamer line between artistic genius, addiction, madness, destitution, uh, and unfortunately, death. So this brings up the, just as an aside, the case of Alexander McQueen, fashion designer Alexander McQueen, uh, born March 17th, 1969. Uh, who has both the sun and the moon in Pisces. Uh, he was as brilliant as he was complex and sensitive. Uh, and, and I don't know if you are aware, but his catwalk shows were incredible performance artworks that included themes of deep sea creatures, madness and rape. So he was a bit of a tormented soul. In 2010, he was found hanged in his own wardrobe of all places, uh, symbolic of the hidden areas like the 12th house where Pisces reigns. His Jupiter was conjunct Uranus uh, in early Libra opposite to his Sun, Moon and North Node in late Pisces. So that alone holds huge tension. But just to give you an indication of the flavour of uh, what can happen with, with Neptune in Pisces. It's good to look back as well. I think there's been a 165 year gap between the last time that Neptune was in Pisces, as opposed to Jupiter. Um, that was back in the 19th century, which was a very Neptunian era, especially around the mid middle of the century. Neptune was discovered in 1846 um, and uh, definitely made a mark, although you can argue that you can't, you don't notice the, the mark that Neptune makes until a lot later. Uh, but the whole era uh, heralded a flourishing of the arts and increased sensitivity to psychic senses. Uh, just to mention, poets Arthur Rimbaud and Oscar Wilde were both born around that time in 1854. In opera, Verdi switched, to, switched his tone and became much more sophisticated. And Wagner formulated the concept, concept of the Gesamtkunstwerk the total artwork which led to the creation of the Bayreuth Festival. Um, their full maturity came a bit later, but around the middle of the century you did get uh, things like the Communist Manifesto, so the hugely idealistic publication. The rise of spiritualism flourished with seances, table tapping, hauntings, uh, all of which became popular. And uh, among writers there was a new theme of uh, the rediscovery of Neoplatonic works and Buddhist ideas about the oversoul. And this had a major influence, especially in the essays of, uh, as we see here on the left, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and in the middle, um, Thoreau, and also the free flowing poetry of Walt Whitman. Also around that time, the uh, Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood was formulated in uh, 1848 and they were regarded as Victorian avant-garde or bohemians. They got a lot of attention. Um, it's not everyone's style, but they came up with very um, odd works, quasi-mystical, medieval, early Renaissance style, uh, but it did reinvigorate the arts. Uh, this one is by William Holman Hunt. So what's really interesting uh, in this um, meditation, if you like, on Jupiter and uh, Neptune in Pisces is that the chart of Sigmund Freud contains these two. He wasn't born exactly on the conjunction, just a, a few months later, a couple of months, but you can see it's, it's there uh, in his fourth house, uh, about 10 degrees apart. So this to me is really interesting. So um, it was exact on March 17th, the 20th, but I think it shows a great depth of thinking uh, because if anyone, perhaps with the exception of uh, Nietzsche, 
who also had Jupiter in Pisces, uh, completely altered the way we think at a very fundamental level about the self, about the psyche. Remember that psyche refers to the soul. Uh, he hinted at this substrata that was only in our peripheral awareness and bubbled up in the sea of dreams or repressed sexual fantasies. He named this the unconscious because um, it was not in our immediate awareness, but which is ironic because the effect uh, of naming it and thinking about it makes us aware of it or slightly aware of it. So he attempted to create a topography of the inner self uh, but he did take on religion and mysticism, these Piscean themes, almost explaining them away to make them sound a little bit more scientific. But I, the feeling is that he has a, had a sneaking admiration for those who could feel this God love thing that he could not share, but he tried to analyze it. So, but he did help to transition us into the modern era where psychotherapists became the new shamans and priests, basically taking uh, this role of Neptune, this uh, spiritual uh, role. And I still find that if you look at the work of Sigmund Freud and you ignore all the uh, critics, that his distinction between Eros, the pleasure principle, uh, which basically refers to Venus and Mars, and Thanatos, the death or destruction wish, which basically refers to Saturn and Pluto, uh, are very insightful and still um, can help you to understand a lot of things that go on. Um, so will this conjunction of Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces uh, produce anyone of the stature of Freud? Well, we don't know, we'll have to wait and see. But I think it could be interesting that any child born on this conjunction next year, 2022 in April, uh, would definitely be an indigo child or a rainbow, possibly some um, spiritual genius. So just consider what all this fuss might be about. You know, I think probably we've forgotten that Neptune has been in Pisces already for quite a long time. Neptune arrived there uh, around 2012 and just remember all the fuss we had about 2012 and all the disappointed people uh, around that when prophecies didn't occur or there was confusion at the very least. So there's a lot of craziness here with Neptune in this position. We're nine years into this deep sea voyage and uh, I think someone should be keeping a detailed logbook in case we lose our way completely. Uh, Neptune stays in Pisces until January 27th, 2026. And um, talk about warping of reality, it's been and continues to be a discombobulating mind melt yeah, with epic portions. And it's difficult to pinpoint, so even everything I say may be um, eh, wrong. <laughs> the sneaky thing about Neptune in Pisces is that we barely notice it, uh, gradually dissolving our world. Uh, maybe 2020 gave us a, 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 a clue about that. 2021 is pushing it further because it's all very subtle and it does not hit us head on like Saturn and Pluto. Well, it, it's, it's, it, um, it wears away gradually in the background. So we still do not know for certain now, up from down, left from right, truth from lies, right from wrong. Uh, and even the difference between potentially curative drug treatments from poisons. Um, the border between life and death uh, can even become very blurry during these periods. I think the, the veils are thin. So, uh, Neptune in Pisces here recalls the work of tribal priest shamans who traverse liminal spaces and act as intermediaries between worlds. Because the thing about it is there are no handles to get hold of uh, with Neptune in this placement. Uh, it's more than usually formula, uh, formless, ineffable, idealistic, elusive and foggy. So it's a ginormous uh, warren of rabbit holes uh, that we have to navigate during this phase and I don't think we fully can appreciate what's happened to us until maybe it's over we can look back with hindsight but definitely there's a hint of collective madness here we have um, a picture of Hieronymus Bosch uh, showing hell what hell might be like um, very vividly imagined uh, but 
I think it, Neptune in Pisces gives us that susceptibility to delusions um, uh, and then any hope that we have to, uh, to be redeemed might have to be put on hold or may never happen as self-proclaimed redeemers can be very disappointing. Um, Neptune finally enters Aries in uh, January 2026 when uh, the, it may turn all those who have been through this experience into the true spiritual warriors that they were designed to be, but that's a long way off. So those with Neptune at 23 or 24 of Pisces are going to feel this the most. And I, I found that in the chart of uh, philosopher Henri Bergson, that he has Neptune or had Neptune at this uh, degree. And in his work, he tackled themes of going beyond time and realizing that layers and levels of reality and illusion are multiple and intertwined. And this quote shows it very well, that he had this awareness of uh, the awakening process where he says, fortunately, some are born with spiritual immune systems that sooner or later give rejection to the illusory worldview grafted upon them from birth through social conditioning. They begin sensing that something is amiss and start looking for answers. Inner knowledge and anomalous outer experiences show them a side of reality others are oblivious to. And so begins their journey of awakening. Each step of the journey is made by following the heart instead of following the crowd and by choosing knowledge over the veils of ignorance. I think this is uh, appropriate for this placement of Neptune in Pisces. So looking at the other degree, anyone with Jupiter at zero to two degrees of Pisces would also be uh, affected because that begins on Friday. And um, Terence Stamp comes to mind here as he has this position of Jupiter at zero degrees. So he will be feeling this. Uh, he may have done the greatest put down in film as Priscilla, but I tend to think of him more as the Christ-like transformative figure in Pasolini's Theorema. And also uh, he played uh, the Russian Count Seeker who led Gurdjieff to the remote Sufi training center in Peter Brook's meetings with remarkable men. And famously, he was quite close or had a, had a friendship with Krishnamurti and even titled his book after um, a quote by Krishnamurti about the ocean uh, arriving in the drop, which of course is also very Neptunian. So uh, Terence Stamp and anyone with Jupiter at these degrees uh, would be having a Jupiter return. Uh, so that will really give them a booster. So that could be something wonderful and creative. Uh, probably they might be feeling uh, warmer, more um, magnanimous and um, really developing their um, creative projects and anything to do with uh, spirituality would be uh, um, helped along, I think. But Jupiter will also try in any planet at the same degree in the other water signs, Cancer and Scorpio. And also, to just to remember, will also oppose any planets lodged at the first two degrees of Virgo. So just check for all those placements to see uh, what could be happening for you. So what can we expect from this? Um, I'm going to summarize now, basically. Uh, I, I'm definitely looking forward to this transit, um, but I have to bear in mind all the other things that are going on in everyone's charts and uh, in the world at large. So I think we can be positive about it. Um, so on that side of things, we may all receive a massive upgrade of uh, energy. Um, and warm to our fellow humans a little bit more than we have been doing. So a little bit more compassion might be on the cards. Definitely with Jupiter there, there might be an unprecedented, unprecedented depth of interest in higher learning. So studying philosophy or natural law, universal principles, such as um, Karen Armstrong's famous uh, emphasis on the golden rule, which she said was the underlying core philosophy of all world religions. And, uh, but I also think that uh, 
because Neptune is associated with films, that we might get some epic scale films in, uh, along the, the likes of uh, Lord of the Rings um, or the epic time traveling film Interstellar uh, that kind of bends your mind a little bit to encompass new ideas. Uh, so that could be really interesting. So, and I think Jupiter will ensure that these stories will be on an epic scale or an epic heroic scale. But on the um, negative side, um, this conjunction, we may become more ensnared further into the spider's web of delusions. Uh, and that might spin even more confusion that we already have. Uh, so just to be aware of that, these two planets are both vast and multifarious. And I'd like to believe that we, we can manifest the best side of these two and that will spark a transcendent sense of unity, soul bonding on a global level. But we can only hope for that. Uh, it could thrust you beyond your usual limits and so challenge you uh, to, to keep boundaries or to keep your feet on the ground. Um, you may lose a sense of proportion or end up sacrificing things that you may regret later. Hopefully this won't be uh, in the transition of uh, a mortal body or in, even into an NDE, which is a near-death experience. But uh, every era has its new words. And I think one that comes to mind that blends Jupiter and Neptune is hopium. Um, you know, a mixture of hope and opium. But um, I always recall that uh, when Pandora was too curious and opened the box with all the all, and all the evil spirits were let out into the world, that the very, very last, last creature that crawled out of the box was hope. So make of that what you will. Um, what I might be doing is planning for a pilgrimage. I think uh, that could be a good thing to do around that time. Uh, I do have a couple of plans there. But I think what's cool is that they're both uh, in their own sign and uh, so that unhinders them they'll be like unhinged and really comfortable being who they are and together it's going to be a super booster no matter which way it affects you uh, but it could rely just upon your own the quality of your own consciousness you know how that develops I think it's important to be cautious but also uh, to uh, hope, uh, but not to pump up the hope, uh, because I think the psychological rule is the higher the expectation, the deeper the disappointment. But similarly, uh, the harder the struggle to achieve against the odds, the greater the final triumph. But at least look to where Pisces is in your natal chart. Uh, please do that, because this would not make sense otherwise. And um, it could be in, uh, because remember, Jupiter will go across 30 degrees and that could cross two houses. Um, or it could uh, encompass only one, but it, it depends. So I'm going to just go through the, each house. Um, and remember that for the next, uh, I think, 76 days, um, that's where it will be. Then it will dip back into Aquarius before it comes in again later this year. So in the first house, um, if this could affect your physical appearance, perhaps even expanding it or changing your, your appearance to a more flowing or lighter style with more unusual colors, or it could affect the way you um, uh, appear through your skin uh, that comes, you know, clearer eyes and a glow that comes from deeper meditation. If Jupiter is in the second house, it could have an impact on your values, broadening them to establish greater security or to boost your finances and um, ideas of where you want to settle. But it could also uh, mean poor judgment about financial risks and overestimating the value of things. If it's in the third house, uh, it would bring opportunities to expand your need to study world cultures and languages or to investigate ancient traditions and worldviews different to your own, uh, perhaps even to teach or to promote these subjects. Um, information, however, remember, can easily reach overload and um, 
being data driven totally has its downside. If, it, if Jupiter is in the fourth house, it could resolve uh, you to expand in your home with an extension or to renovate um, or perhaps to connect with your family a bit more, to be in touch with your ancestors even, and just to expand your consciousness uh, into your home space and make it that little bit more of a temple sanctuary. Uh, just be aware of escaping the outside world here, so to using that and avoiding your work uh, by uh, escaping to your home. In the fifth house, it could be a massive inspiration to your creative projects. You could get all kinds of new ideas uh, or take on a plan that is much larger in scope than you have ever done before, perhaps collaborating with other people or uh, producing that greater work, the bigger than bigger than ever. Uh, or it could relate to other countries, uh, traveling perhaps, um, even if that means um, being an armchair traveler, just exploring more in your mind. It could also lead to writing poetry or songs, uh, as that uh, could appeal to you as well. If it's in the sixth house, it could stimulate your deeper research into body work, energy medicine, crystals, all types of healing modalities to do with the body, nutrition and the minutia of routines and how this knowledge interconnects with spirituality and healing um, to offer that as a way of helping others. If it's in the seventh house, it could expand your opportunities to meet people uh, and connect with them, That you, the kind of people you can relate to on a deeper level perhaps and not uh, the usual kind or perhaps people not from your country who are older or wiser or act like gurus uh, and that you'll be interested in, more interested in finding a soulmate if you believe in that, uh, someone who shares your interest in self-development through relationships. If it's in the eighth house, uh, it could plunge you deep into research, study of psychology or the occult. Um, produce intense emotions related to deaths or inheritances where boundaries are crossed uh, about who has the power and who does not. Uh, this could leave you scarred, but with an awareness that um, the difficult experiences are ultimately therapeutic uh, and so beneficial. If Jupiter is in the ninth, it's in Sagittarius's own house here, so it kind of trebles the intensity of all leanings towards the higher mind, to higher learning, religion, philosophy, the law, with a big uh, dope of compassion in these areas and maybe the acquisition of wisdom. Uh, it could mean travel too, or, or deeper reflection and meditation on the meaning of life. If it's in the 10th house, it will reach you in your public reputation. So the way you organize yourself um, and become the CEO of whatever it is, the business that you are running. Uh, but you may consider having a makeover or expanding your public role and, and uh, keeping control of your superego or that the realization you've been clinging on to traditions too much and need to ease off from work or too much work, workaholism and to take a break, change jobs, uh, retire or uh, give up your adherence to rules. If it's in the 11th house, uh, it could boost your ideals to create a new system of social order, new communities and charity groups online and to promote political and legal reform. And these could grow at a rapid rate and be difficult to control uh, and you could feel yourself becoming a victim of this, the very system that you set up um, because there may be too many rules. So the focus should be on humanitarian or human rather than humanitarian projects and less on allowing systems to suppress the individual. And finally, if it is in the 12th house, um, it, it may not be apparent at all here uh, because uh, this is the house of uh, hidden things so it could just appear in your dreams and uh, you could be more attracted to being secluded or going into the interior spaces and any energies that Jupiter and Neptune may have just could be like sleeper agents 
in your life for producing a huge number of um, recurring synchronicities. So watch out for those. So I hope you liked my review of uh, Jupiter, Neptune, Pisces and the whole uh, mythology of it. Uh, it was, it's uh, quite a journey, um, but I've enjoyed doing this. Um, but I'm never sure uh, about how, uh, you know, once I get into a topic, it can go so deep. So I hope that suited your uh, style as well as mine. Uh, what I'm not so good at, I think, is uh, the uh, promotion side. So I need to keep reminding myself to say who I am, where I can be found. You can find me on this email here, usastro at protonmail.com or at my website, www.proteusastrology.co.uk. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook, uh, Proteus Astrology, uh, Telegram, Proteus Astrology, also on Instagram, Twitter, Gab, Patreon, MeWe, BitChute and Odyssey. So I hope to see you there. It would be great to have some of your feedback and thank you uh, for your patience, for listening to all of this. And uh, I hope you got something out of it. Thank you very much.